Lucius and Aurora, the two main heroes from Dragon Quest, well, heroes. One of the many new characters introduced in the Dragon Quest mythos. So why don't we take a gander at their movesets and see where it all comes from. And the reason why I'm reviewing both of these characters at the exact same time is because they have the exact same moveset. So to save up on effort and time... Alright, let's go! Both Lucius and Aurora are two childhood friends that grew up in the land of Arba and became members of the Royal Guard, serving under King Doric. And both of these characters have very unique and outstanding designs. Except Lucius seems to borrow a few cues from the hero from Dragon Quest VIII, while Aurora seems to be influenced by the hero from Dragon Quest Sword. In terms of their character, Lucius is cool and calculating while Aurora is a bit more hot-headed, which is somewhat strange since they both wield elements that are opposite these personalities. The color of the clothing is also a contrasting element. Lucius, the ever-so-vigilant strategist, wears blue. Aurora, the battle-ready knight, wears red. Aside from the inherent themes that come with these colors and the fact that I have to compare it to Dynasty Warriors, the forces of Wei, who are plotters and schemers, wear blue. And the forces of Wu, who are mainly comprised of warrior clans, wear red. However, both of their names do mean light, which is appropriate since they're both the children of light, just like many other Dragon Quest heroes to have a destiny to fulfill. Nevertheless, these characteristics are actually very similar to another couple in the Samurai Warrior series, Yinchio Tachibana and Munishige Tachibana, which is a bit appropriate since both of these characters are dressed in knightly attire. It is a reoccurring staple that the heroes of Dragon Quest are sword wielders. The sword and shield fighting style is not a big part of the Warrior series, but it does appear. Again, see Munashige Tachibana from Samurai Warriors, Ching Sai from Dynasty Warriors, and Nuwa, Achilles, and Sofitia from Warriors Orochi. Their sword techniques and spells are also reoccurring moves from Dragon Quest. Their slash combos are very reminiscent of these fighting styles, especially from Munashige and Sofitia. The charging slash is an attack that can be followed up after any combo, similar to Zhao Yun's heavy attack combos. The Rising Slice is a simple launcher, being able to launch enemies into the air, just like any other first combo in any Warriors game. The Swiping Slice is a jumping downward slash, similar to a skill done by Sofitia and Jahu Doon. The Searing Blizzard Slash, which is a horizontal strike imbued with either fire or ice, can be attributed to either Takatora or Jahu Doon. The air combos are just air combos, anybody in any of the series can use them. However, the Air Raid actually comes from Jahu Dune's Aerial Muso attack. Inferno Slash or Cold Fission is a fire or ice tornado that can be launched at the enemy. And this move might come from either Kojiro Sasaki, Pong Tong, or Takatora. Flame Slash and Frost Slash, both downward strikes imbued with either fire or ice, seems to come from a downward strike performed by Sun Tzu or Takatora. Zap, Zapple, and Kazab come from the Thunder Callers of the series, most notably Nuwa and Ginchio Dachibana. And of course, they're coup de grace, calling down lightning from above to deliver a devastating slash. One being Giga Gash and the other being Giga Slash. Both of these are final attacks learned by sword wielders in the Dragon Quest series. The first part of this attack seems to be inspired by Ginchio's ability to power up her sword with lightning in earlier Samurai Warriors games. Lucius's Giga Gash also seems to be inspired by the Rage Musos in the Dynasty Warriors series because those are usually short-ranged, and Aurora's Giga Slash seems to be very similar to the slashing Muso attacks in Samurai Warriors 4. Now, because Dragon Quest Heroes doesn't rely solely on the combat like in other Musou games, there really isn't much more to say beyond what is being presented. However, that doesn't stop this game from being pretty alright. But enough about what I think, what do you think? Do you agree with my observations? Did I leave something out? Leave a comment down below explaining what I missed. And if you want to be up to date on more videos like this, why don't you hit that subscribe button and check out the other videos on this channel similar to the subject. Thank you guys for watching, Bye bye